Make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. And to never miss another lecture from Miracle, hit the bell icon to get regular updates on English literature. Hello and welcome to Miracle English Language and Literature Institute. I'm Professor Abha Sharma and hope you're watching all my videos which are based on uh, solving the November 2017 UGC net exam. This is the seventh one in the series and I want you to comment, like and subscribe the channel. Question number 46. Which of the following plays by David Hare is not part of a trilogy of State of the Nation plays? And the correct answer is the power of yes. David Hare was more of a journalist, so he used to take many interviews. His trilogy of plays um, is based on these interviews. Uh, Racing Demon was published in 1990, Murmuring Judges 1991, Absence of War 1993. And the play, The Bar of Yes, was published in 2009 and it is a serious indictment of capitalism. And when I discovered I could write plays, I was genuinely amazed. I had absolutely no sense of it before I did it. And when I found it, it was the most joyful thing in my life. And when did... Uh, question number 47. Chimanda Dichis. Uh, last novel, Americana, 2013, centers in the romantic and existential struggles of a young Nigerian woman studying in the U.S. and finding success as a blogger. What is her blogging about? And the correct answer is race. Now, uh, since the time of uh, African countries getting freedom, the citizens of Africa are now realizing their identity. And they have become aware that there is so much racism in the world since the time of Rudyard Kipling and other writers. So she, her character, when she goes to US, she starts blogging about her feelings and she becomes successful in conveying her thoughts to the white people as well. It goes through many experiences. It's, it's very hard to <laughs> summarize. I think one of the things I wanted to do with Americana was to write about leaving home, write about immigration. And she comes to the US and one of the things that she discovers is identity. She discovers that she's black. She hasn't thought of herself as black in Nigeria because she hasn't had any need to. It's sort of religion, it's ethnicity, but, but not race. And in, in the US, she discovers that she's black and it, it becomes for her a kind of... Um, I like to think of it as an awakening, but also it gives her a subject to write a very funny, acerbic blog um, about race in America and about what it means. And, and, and it's sort of her reflections on blackness as a non-American black. Question number 48. Why does Father Dolan punish Stephen with the panty bat in Joyce's portrait of the artist as a young man? The correct answer is second. Stephen is not doing his work because his glasses are broken. James Joyce is the most influential uh, writer of the 20th century. He was an Irish writer and he wrote a blockbuster uh, book, Ulysses, in 1922, which was banned later. And you can see the book reviews done by me on both the books, Ulysses and Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man. Question number 49. Using a non-linear narrative, this American novel explores the psychic damage to a veteran of World War II and shows how a measure of healing is attained through his acceptance of Laguna myths and rituals. Identify the work. The correct answer is Ceremony. It is written by Native American writer Leslie Marmon Silco and it was first published in 1977. And this is about the oral traditions and ceremonial practices of Navajo and Pueblo people. This is a story about a man named Tayo who returns from World War II and he uh, suffers from battle fatigue. And the doctors say that it is the post 
post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, he has to live within uh, the company of his own people under the traditions and ceremonial practices to heal himself. I had a book contract to write either a collection of short stories or a novel. And this was back in 1973. For me, writing is a wonderful way to transcend place and time. And so... Question number 50. What delusion does uh, Leo Baranovsky in Anton Chekhov's play The Cherry Orchard has as she looks at the orchard? So the correct answer is second. She sees her dead mother walking through the orchard. Anton Chekhov was a very famous Russian writer and he wrote this play in 1903. He's famous for uh, the simple language because many people can easily understand. So in this play, the character's vision of her own mother walking through the cherry orchard reinforces the picture of a woman suffering from illusions. These illusions, she can recapture the idol of her uh, childhood and block out the tragic events. So, these illusions can help her to block the past six years from her mind. Chekhov wrote about human nature and like Shakespeare, the reason why Chekhov will be done forever is because human nature has not changed. The last time this was done, the Cherry Orchard at the National Theatre was done in the Cottesloe. So the concentration was very much on the character's inner turmoil. And I wanted to... Question number 51. From which source did Swift get the idea of writing verses on the death of Dr. Swift? And the correct answer is second after a reading of a maxim by Law Rochefoucauld. The maxim was, in the misfortune of our best friends, we always find something that does not displease us. So Swift wrote a satire, verses on the death of Dr. Swift. He was so much inspired by this maxim, which he finds cynically based upon the truth of human nature. So through this work, Swift questions the follies and customs of humanity. It is a satire with ironic jabs, ridiculing humanity. It is well-crafted and scholarly work. Question number 52. Two of the following words were borrowed from French after the Norman conquest. And the correct answer is mutton and pork. So after the Norman invasion of England in 1066, many of the more refined English words uh, describing finished products as uh, cow or sheep or pig, they were replaced by the Anglo-Norman uh, French words like uh, beef or pork or mutton. Question number 53. Which the following is not true regarding the Oresteia trilogy by Aeschylus? The second one seems to be not true. Aegisthus' vengeful feelings for Agamemnon results from the rivalry for the hand of Clytemnestra. Uh, the pronunciations are very difficult, but I have written the trilogy here, Agamemnon, Libation Bearers and Eumenides. Now, Agamemnon returns from the Trojan War with Cassandra, uh, the daughter of the king of Troy, and they're killed uh, by his own wife and lover then the son avenges his father he kills both and then he flees to uh, delphi where he's acquitted and the furies uh, which were after him are transformed into the kindly ones that is eurymenides quest number 54 the first instance of female cross-dressing with the disconcerting nuances of a boy actor dressing as the boy while playing the role of a woman in the dramatic world of Shakespeare occurs in? The correct answer is The Two Gentlemen of Verona. Now, this is a play about two men, Valentine and Proteus. Proteus is having an affair with Julia and Valentine leaves the city and there he meets Sylvia uh, and he falls in love with her. Now, this Julia... Uh, whose character is played by a boy during those times, 
And now this boy who's dressed up as Julia, that means female, disguises herself as male. That means this boy again becomes male in the uh, play. So this can only happen in Shakespearean plays. Question number 55. For Coleridge, our power to perceive symbols gleaned from the world about us is related to the category of and the correct answer is primary imagination. H.T. Coleridge in his critical text Biographical Literaria distinguishes between primary imagination and secondary imagination. Primary imagination is the imagination which is uh, there in the world. Whatever we perceive, the symbols, images, consciously or subconsciously and this primary is taken to this level of secondary by working on it. So the writers when they create a story their primary imagination works inside and gives rise to secondary imagination. Question number 56. After independence although English was not an Indian language it was accorded the status of an additional language. Um, the answer may be additional language or associate language because at many places it is also called as associate language. Actually even after a decade Hindi could not get uh, the uh, status of the only official language so in, on 7th of August 1959 Nehru gave the assurance to people uh, who were non-Hindi speakers that English would retain its status um, as the additional official language. So till date English has played an instrumental role in maintaining the diversity of India's language scene. Those who used to hate English in the beginning uh, now are in favor of introducing it in the very first year of education. Question number 57. Which English journal announced that it was principally intended for the use of politic persons who are so public spirit as to neglect their own affairs to look into transactions of state but fail to live up to this and amused readers with accounts of gallantry, pleasure and entertainment. Of course, the answer is second, the Tatler. Tatler was a British literary journal founded by Richard Steele in 1709. It was published for two years, initially three times a week, and it was under a pen name called Isaac Bickerstaff Esquire. And the contributors were also Jonathan Swift and Joseph Edison. And it was the very first uh, uh, adopted journalistic persona written in first person. And Steele wanted to uh, entertain people by the gossips heard in various London coffee houses. So he uh, mixed his own inventor stories in the real gossips to entertain. Later, uh, Steele and Edison uh, came up with another uh, journal called The Spectator Magazine. Question number 58. The grammar translation method of language teaching does not include and the correct answer is inductive teaching because when you are learning a language through grammar translation method uh, there should be focus on grammar rules, uh, new words should be uh, learned that is the vocabulary words and of course the focus on written language should be there. There is no inductive teaching, uh, there are no real life situations created for the student. Question number 59. Who is the narrator in Kamla Markandeya's Nectar in a Sieve? And the correct answer is Rukmini, the central character herself. This novel was written by Kamla Markandeya in 1954 and it is set in India during the period of intense urban development. And this narrates the uh, marriage uh, between Rukmini, the youngest daughter of village headman, and Nathan, who is a tenant farmer in flashback. The narrator, whatever she selects to uh, tell us is for a reason and every detail is deliberate with added meanings. The title is borrowed from Work Without Hope from S.T. Coleridge. Work without hope draws nectar in a sieve and hope without an object cannot live. We have launched new batches for 2018 UGC net exam. So you can join our batches 
Uh, if you want to gain the real knowledge in literature and of course you will be successful if you are determined in your aim.